Kaveri Water War Games team. Karnataka asked to release water to Tamil Nadu. Ahead of India meet, DMK and Congress fight it out. Poles unite, Pani divides. Kaveri Water War, big focus on 6 p.m. Prime. Good evening. You're watching 6 p.m. Prime here on India Today. I'm Akshita Nandakopal and this evening we're putting the focus on the fight between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Once again, it's over the Kaveri River and the distribution of water. The Karnataka government has been directed to release 5,000 cusecs of water for the next 15 days, which they are abiding by. But political repercussions are many. With the countdown on for the India Alliance meet happening tomorrow, where the DMK and Congress will be standing side by side, they continue to fight it out over water between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. We'll be getting you that and much more. A look at the headlines first. Race for opposition PM phase heats up. Congress poster shows Rahul as opposition bloc leader, while other India parties pitch own netas for PM. Uddhav Dhanpli says many options are there in the India alliance for Prime Minister phase. Day before India huddle, Congress's Rahul poster triggers meltdown. Arvind Kejriwal is sidelined, while Sena UBT Carter threatened to take down posters. As Team India huddles in Mumbai, AIMIM chief Asaduddin Oasi bats for a third front led by KCR, says Rahul and Modi are brothers. Pragyan rover snaps lander Vikram at the Shiv Shakti point on the lunar surface. Sulfur, oxygen, titanium and other elements also detected on the moon. India today accesses damning charge sheet against Stalin Neta Senthil Balaji. ED says Senthil exploited position as minister while also acquiring proceeds of cash for job scam. And India's teen chess prodigy Pragnananda gets a grand homecoming in Chennai after grabbing the silver medal at the World Chess Finals. Also meets Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin who felicitates him. For the last few weeks, the fight between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu over Kaveri water has been reignited. Karnataka has released 5,000 cusecs of water to Tamil Nadu as per the directives made by the Kaveri Water Management Authority. Now, Karnataka Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivkumar said that the government will be appealing against this in the Supreme Court to reduce the amount of water they've been asked to release. But what are the political repercussions of this kind of a showdown between the DMK and the Congress? Let's take a look at all the reactions coming in first. The Kaveri water war escalates. Karnataka on Wednesday released 5,000 cusecs of water to Tamil Nadu after a directive from the Kaveri Water Regulation Committee. The committee has instructed Karnataka to provide 5,000 cusecs of water every day till September 2nd. The Siddharamaya government facing the anger of farmers in the state claims it is working on reducing the quantity of water released. <laughs> The BJP has slammed the Karnataka government for releasing water to Tamil Nadu. Another 5,000 has been recommended and if they are going to leave it, there will be no left for drinking water and there will be no water left to Kaveri Basin. This will affect the state, um, especially Bangalore and other townships in Kaveri area and the farmers of Kaveri. This is a totally, uh, total mismanagement of uh, Kaveri water. 
both Karnataka and Tamil Nadu are unsatisfied with the Kaveri panel's decision. The Stalin government had requested 24,000 cusacks of water, but was given only 5,000 cusacks. Tamil Nadu has approached the Supreme Court to get more water from Karnataka. The court will take up Tamil Nadu's plea on Friday. Bureau Report, India Today. So now as we speak, Karnataka has released 5,000 cusacks of water to Tamil Nadu as per the agreement and the directive given by the Kaveri Water Management Authority. Every single day for the next 15 days, Karnataka will have to release 5,000 cusacks of water and this has led to this big bone of contention with Karnataka saying we don't have that much water. Tamil Nadu meanwhile said that we need 24,000 cusacks of water for 10 days. This is where there's a disagreement and now we're expecting it to move to the Supreme Court as both sides have said that they will approach the top court for relief. Let's take this across to Pramod Madhav who's joining us live to give us the Tamil Nadu perspective. Anaga Kesha will be joining us live from Karnataka to tell us how the Karnataka government is going to be dealing with this. Pramod, good evening. You look at what's currently happening on the Kaveri dispute. Uh, the DMK maintains that the amount of water that they to receive from Karnataka isn't something they're getting right now. But I do wonder what this means politically. The DMK will still attend that meeting come tomorrow in Mumbai, yes? Well, uh, actually, uh, definitely, the uh, DMK is going to attend the meeting in Mumbai. But, however, they are keeping this completely aside from the India Alliance because they claim that this is something they are they are supposed to get. And the important aspect is that the current crop cycle is called as a Samba crop cycle, which starts from almost July, August, and goes all the way to January. And it's almost a six-month-long crop cycle. This is where six delta districts from the state of Tamil Nadu entirely depend on Kaveri water. And be it the former ARDA government, ARDA government or the current DMK government, they claim as that as a low, lower Liberian state, they are entitled to that water. In fact, yesterday, while speaking on this matter, the state uh, uh, water resources minister, Dure Murugan, Dure Murugan, openly claimed that the Kaveri Water Management Authority has been lethargic and, and it was a kind of like allegation against the uh, authority itself. And he said that Tamil Nadu definitely needs that 24,000 cusacs of water for the next 10 days to save the crops. Okay, let's bring in Anaga Kesho also on this broadcast. Uh, Anaga, interestingly, there's a lot of political pressure on the Sidramaya government right now. The BJP is talking about exactly this, saying, you know, you've got the DNK and Congress in talks about an alliance. They are allies even otherwise besides the India alliance. And yet they can't seem to come to a mutual agreement on the Kaveri water sharing deal. Very, very true, Akshita. And as we speak, the I dot N dot D dot I dot A agreement is still on that has both the DMK and Congress. And when we spoke to them, they said that their primary objective was to defeat BJP, completely negating the Kaveri water issue. They are walking hand in hand with this big grand alliance called the India Alliance. But on the Kaveri issue as well, the Congress government is saying that here we have only the southwestern monsoon that has completely failed. But for Tamil Nadu, you know, uh, even if one monsoon monsoon has failed, they can always bank on the northeastern monsoon that particularly comes between the months of October and November. So that can still satisfy your crop requirements and your agriculture requirements. But here for us, we are here contemplating a drought season. Our chief, you know, our chief minister wrote a letter to the centre asking them to tweak the parameters required to declare a drought, which really screams of how bad the situation is here in Karnataka. At this point, we really, really, really cannot afford to let go of so much water is what Karnataka are saying. Imagine this, 5,000 cusacks of water every day for 15 days. Can Karnataka and its farmers really afford to let go of this is the big question. And on Friday, we have the Supreme Court hearing. So will Karnataka get any relief is the big question at this point, Akshita. That's right. So the Supreme Court is also to intervene in this matter. The last time around, the top court did come out with an order which many presumed would settle this once and for all. But it uh, at a time when essentially you're seeing drought conditions, there hasn't been enough rainfall in Karnataka. It's led to the showdown once again. Thanks very much, Anaga, for joining us with those details. Pramod, I'll request you to stay on with me because up next is an India Today exclusive story. The Enforcement Directorate filing a 3,000-page charge sheet against Tamil Nadu Minister Senthil Balaji. The Financial Probe Agency has accused Senthil of a cash-for-job scam when he was the Transport Minister 
back in the AIE-DMK regime. A lot of allegations against him, scathing charges levelled by the Enforcement Directorate. Let's break that down for you first in our next report. Trouble mounts for Tamil Nadu Minister V. Senthil Balaji, who was arrested in June in a cash for job scam. The Enforcement Directorate on Tuesday filed a 3,000-page charge sheet against Balaji. India Today has accessed the charge sheet, which details the cash for job scam that allegedly took place in 2014 when Balaji was the Transport Minister in the previous AIA-DMK regime. The Financial Probe Agency has accused Balaji of conspiring with his brother and officials of the Transport Department to accept bribes from job aspirants. The ED says the marks of those candidates who allegedly paid bribes to Balaji's men were tampered to ensure that they received jobs. The ED further claims that Balaji laundered the bribe money through his accomplices and his brother using bank accounts of family members. The agency in the charge sheet mentions that Balaji's wife, as Meghala, was also questioned about the sudden rise in cash deposits in a bank account. Meanwhile, the opposition party AIA-DMK slammed the Stalin government for defending Balaji despite the charge sheet. A sitting minister who is languishing in jail and Mr. Chief Minister who is head of the state and who is head of the cabinet is hesitant to call any action on him nor give any comment on the same wherein he is all hell-bent to save him come what me. Every day Mr. Sindhil Balaji is spending in custody is giving MK Stalin sleepless nights. Sindhil Balaji's judicial custody was extended till September 15th on Tuesday. Bureau report India today. So what is the modus operandi here? Let's explain it to you on how directly the money trail according to the Enforcement Directorate is linked to Minister Senthil Balaji. Of course, at the heart of it is Senthil Balaji. And remember, he was a transport minister in the erstwhile AIA-DMK government. His PAs, his associates, all of them were involved. And this particular cash flow went like this. It was essentially a jobs for cash scam. Uh, MTC and the Tamil Nadu State Transport Corporation officials were involved. Job aspirant candidates, essentially what they do is they would go ahead and send money to mediators and brokers who were set up, clearly identified. And these were people who were directly linked to Central Balaji's aides, to his PA, as well as his associates. They would send the money to these mediators and brokers who would then then send money to Senthil Balaji. That would then put the wheels in motion for them to get a job. There would be transactions and clear directives given to the state transport corporations and appointment orders would go across to all those who were willing to pay extra money. All of this money, according to the Enforcement Directorate, was being pocketed by none other than Minister Senthil Balaji, someone who, remember, at this point, the Stalin government continues to defend. Let me bring in Pramod Madhav on this broadcast. Pramod, uh, this was uh, an exclusive story, of course, filed by Shilpa Nair, who is covering another report for us. So I wanted to come across to you for more details on how the DMK really has reacted to these latest allegations. The Enforcement Directorate going into great detail as to exactly how they've identified Senthil Balaji's role in this cash for job scam. <laughs> Well, in one word, one line, if you need to uh, explain this particular case, we can only say that this is a curious case of Sindhil Balaji because this actual scam is supposed to have occurred between 2011 and 2015 when he was the minister in AIDMK government and right then after that he quit the party and he joined DMK and during that period it was the uh, current chief minister MK Stalin who spoke against Sindhil Balaji and even we have video clippings of that when he was uh, uh, in Karur during a campaign he spoke how Sindhil Balaji is corrupt and such but right now the same party is defending the Sendhil Balaji, claiming that until he is proven guilty, he is definitely not guilty. And uh, the thing, they, uh, what the Sendhil Balaji's team was asking for was a charge sheet which has been given to them. We've been told that's almost 3,000 pages because that much long uh, raids were conducted by ED, by IT, in various locations, including Sendhil Balaji's residence, his brother Ashok's residence, who's still at Raj, his Ashok's brother wife's residence, especially Sendhil Balaji also. I mean, uh, the ED also mentioned about a case where, uh, well, like, Crow's worth property was transferred to Meghla for a mere 10 lakh rupees and all this was categorically investigated and this charge sheet has been filed now, Akshita.
All right, uh, Pramod, thanks very much for getting us all of those details. Uh, stay with us because I'm going to come back to you on the other side of a very short break. Pramod Madhav is reporting currently from Sri Harikota. And yes, the focus is on Sri Harikota because of the Aditya L1 launch, which is scheduled to happen on Saturday. So in just about two days from now, we'll also get you pictures that have come in for the first time from Pragyan Rover showing our lander Vikram at the Shiv Shakti spot on the lunar surface. Today wins best channel of the year. Thank you very much, viewers, for making the India Today group the most awarded TV news network at the Enva. Awards 2023. रक्षाबंधन की पूर्व संध्या पर एक ऐतिहासिक और अभिनंदनीय निर्णय लिया है, जिसके तहत उज्जवला योजना के लाभार्थियों को प्रति सिलेंडर दो सौ रुपये की छूट और पचहत्तर लाख नए कनेक्शन देने की घोषणा यह सर्वथा उचित और अभिनंदनीय निर्णय है वो सरकार ये कहती थी कि ये इंटरनेशनल प्राइसेस की वजह से एलपीजी के दाम बढ़ते हैं आज चुनाव से छः महीने पहले उनको वो दाम घटाने पड़ रहे हैं इसका मतलब दोबारा से चुनने आने की उम्मीद भारतीय जनता पार्टी की कम हुई है जिस तरीके से विपक्ष की तीसरी बैठक इंडिया अलायंस की बैठक होने वाली है उसको लेकर घबराहट साफ जाहिर है महंगाई एक मुद्दा है लोग चुप हैं लोग डरते हैं लोग अपनी बात जो दिल की बात है वो अपनी मन की बात सामने नहीं रखते और 2024 में जब वोट करने जाएंगे तो वो बात वोटों के द्वारा सामने आ जाएगी गरीबी इतनी ज़्यादा है आज के दिन कि 900 रुपया भी किसके पास है किस परिवार के पास है कि सिलेंडर बदल पहले तो आप सिलेंडर का दाम वाम दो तो इंस्टॉलमेंट्स में फिर हर नए सिलेंडर पर नौ सौ गरीब आदमी के पास इतनी इतना इतनी ताकत है ही नहीं
make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. Gears up for Aditya L1 launch. Shares first look of India's solar probe. Aditya L1 loaded on India's Bahubali. Countdown kicks off for Saturday blast off. From Chandrama to Surya. India heads to the sun. Excitement peaking once again as ISRO is all set for the launch of Aditya L1. Our mission to explore the solar surface, to explore the sun. We're going to be talking about that in just a bit. But let's begin by talking about our moon mission first. Chandrayaan-3, which has been a roaring success so far, has sent across these pictures. For the first time ever, we've managed to get a picture from Rover Pragyan of how Lander Vikram looks. He's hard at work, as you can see in those pictures. You've got the chest, uh, you've got, in fact, uh, the uh, Il Ilsa, all of it currently working. There are three payloads, remember, on board Vikram. What exactly am I talking about when I'm referring to Chaste or Ilsa? Let's break that down for you in our next report. Smile please. And with that witty caption, Isro dropped the one picture we have all been waiting for. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the beautiful Vikram lander that made all our moon dreams come true. Standing sturdy and tall at the Shiv Shakti point on the moon, Vikram has been captured for the first time by rover Pragyan's super effective navigation cameras. Termed very fittingly as the image of the mission by the ISRO team, you can see clearly that Vikram is hard at work. No rest clearly even after touching down and making a billion dreams come true. Vikram's three payloads are all functioning as seen in this image. The Chaste and the Ilsa are touching down on the moon's surface and conducting tests. The Chandra surface thermophysical experiment measures the temperature profile of the lunar topsoil around the South Pole to understand its thermal behavior, while the Ilsa or the instrument of lunar seismic activity measures the seismic activity at the Shiva Shakti point. It is not just Vikram that's loaded to the T. Rover Pragyan is also conducting several experiments and has now found the presence of sulfur also. So, बात बाहर आई है कि सल्फर की जो स्पेक्ट्रल लाइन है वो क्लियर दिखती है जो पहले अन्य जगह पे उतनी क्लेरिटी से नहीं दिखती तो वो साउथ पोल पे जो भी जमीन उन्होंने एनालिसिस की उसमें सल्फर का प्रेजेंस क्लियरली दिखता है तो ये एक अपने एक अलग प्रकार की और एक अलग तरीके की खोज कही जाएगी जिसमें स्पेक्ट सल्फर का स्पेक्ट्रल कंपोजिशन पता लगता है Pragyan has moved several meters away from the lander now, as evident from these pictures released by ISRO yesterday, which showed the rover retracing his steps after coming close to a massive crater on the lunar surface. The world is absolutely stunned by all the photos and videos released by ISRO as the Chandrayaan mission is now at the halfway mark with seven more glorious days of Pragyan's moon adventure left. Bureau report. India Today.
From Chandrayaan 3, let's talk about Aditya L1, which ISRO is currently putting all of the hard work into. What exactly is this mission all about? How will it work? How long is it going to take for it to get anywhere close to the sun? Seha Mordani explains that and much more in this detailed report. Riding high on Chandrayaan 3's successful landing, ISRO is now gearing up for the next cosmic quest. Aditya L1 mission is what we are talking about. This is ISRO's first solar mission. We're talking about India's feet on the moon, eyes now on the sun. Let's talk about this particular mission, Aditya L1, which like I said, is ISRO's India's first solar mission. The vehicle first. Aditya L1 is going to be hitching a ride on India's heavy duty launch vehicle, which is the PSLV XL. The PSLV XL weighs 320 tons and the height is 44.4 meters. The PSLV XL is a four stage vehicle with multiple satellite launch capabilities and multiple orbit capabilities. Just take a look at how this essentially is going to take off and place Four, itself three, on the two, sun's halo one. orbit. And lift off. What then is the Lagrange point, now named after Joseph Louis Lagrange, a French mathematician who first studied them in the 18th century. The Lagrange points are points in space where the gravitational forces of two large bodies such as the Sun and the Earth balance out, creating a region of equilibrium. Now these points in space can be used by spacecraft to reduce fuel consumption needed to remain in position. There are five of them, L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5. L1 is about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth or approximately 1% of the Earth-Sun distance. It is essentially the vantage point. Let's talk about the journey to L1. Well, after being placed in a low Earth orbit by ISRO's PSLV XL rocket, the orbit is going to be more made more elliptical and spacecraft will be launched towards L1 point by using on-board propulsion. As the spacecraft travel towards L1, it will exit Earth's gravitational sphere of influence or SOI. After the exit, cruise phase will start and craft will be injected into a large halo orbit around L1. It is going to take four months for the spacecraft to reach its destination. So why are we studying the sun? The sun, remember, is the nearest star and therefore can be studied in much more detail as compared to other stars, for example. Now, by studying the sun, we can learn much more about stars in our Milky Way as well as about stars in various other galaxies. Sun's explosive solar phenomena, if directed towards the Earth, could cause various types of disturbances in the near-Earth space environment. To learn about and track Earth-directed storms and to predict their impact, continuous solar observations are required. Every storm that emerges from the sun and heads towards Earth passes through L1. The various thermal and magnetic phenomena on the sun are of extreme nature. Thus, the sun also provides a good natural lab to understand those phenomena which can't be directly studied in any other lab. What then are the main objectives of this solar mission? The spacecraft carries seven payloads designed to study the sun's atmosphere and its interaction with the solar wind. The mission is aimed at studying the super high temperatures of solar corona, the dynamics of solar system and the solar temperature non-uniformity. It will also study and evaluate the main drivers of space weather. Let's now talk about Aditya L1 science payloads here. Now, of the seven payloads, four will directly study the sun and the remaining three will in situ carry out in situ studies of particles and fields at the Lagrange point as the L1. The science payloads of Aditya L1 are indigenously developed by different labs in the country. With a billion people praying for ISRO success in unison, the countdown to Mission Sun has officially begun. So Sneha, summing up for you, there are all the details that you need to know of the Aditya L1 mission. Pramod Madhav is in Sri Hari Kota. He had an extremely interesting conversation with the person who's in charge of the launch at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Hari Kota. This is Mr. Raju Rajan explaining to us exactly what the Aditya L1 mission launch on Saturday will look like. 
This is the area in Sriharikota from where the actual magnificent launch occurs and we have the uh, director of this place. Thank you so much for speaking to us, sir. So this is a place called uh, where uh, thousands of people come over and we are extremely happy to see the rocket being launched in a beautiful manner. But why Sriharikota? What is the importance of this place, sir? Yeah, it's, it's well known. Sriharikota is situated in the east coast of India as Earth rotates from west to east. Any vehicle, when it is going towards being launched, when you used to admission of this one, we are importing already a velocity. And it is somewhat near about the equator, so that so the maximum velocity that is possible. And with sufficient area that is already provided. Sri Rikota is an island away from the mainland, so that gives added safety features. And we have around 44,000 acres of land, which gives a very good place to, uh, to launch a vehicle in a secured manner and in an isolated place. So we have the model of PSLV over here and uh, this has been one of, it's been coined as the workhorse yes. of uh, ISRO. So when you are launching this, is there any specificity that you take care of and uh, what kind of time period you take and what are the uh, parts in which it's like, uh, what are the engines used in it, this one? See, this is a, a 1 is to 20 model of PSLV where we, the six trapans are uh, of uh, yeah, S9 motors, or we call this uh, motor is kept as six motors, and then we have a uh, first stage of uh, PS1 of S139 solid motors. Then we have PS2 of 37.5 ton liquid stage, which is built at uh, LPSC and IPRC. Then we have a PS3 stage comes here at, uh, for a third stage motor, solid motor, which is released at uh, VSSC, and then motor is cast at uh, SJC Shark. And then we have a PS4 engine here, which is also a, a, a liquid engine, which is a most uh, trusted engine, which finally imports the vehicle into this. And we have a heat shield here, which gives a three meter where we can assemble, uh, house of the spacecraft. And once it crosses the atmosphere, the heat shield comes off and the spacecraft is propelled back. Here in SJC Shar, we, we, we cast both the S139 and the PS3 motor case here, and sometimes depending upon the schedule, some of the segments of the PS0 motors, six motors has been also has been released at uh, SDSH. Nowadays we are taking action, all these motors are released through industries, you know, hot shell from VSC design, then comes. Once the assembly starts, usually it ranges from minimum 35 days to 50 days. In that lifetime time span, we assemble the vehicle and make it ready, depending upon the launch pad, whether it's first launch pad or second launch pad, we assemble the vehicle. Okay, and Pramod Madhav now joins me live from Sri Harikota, where all of the action will be come Saturday at 11.50 a.m. is when the launch is scheduled to happen. Pramod, good evening. You're one of the lucky few who has, in fact, that not to go into ISRO, catch all of the action. What's the mood on ground currently, Pramod? Everyone set for that mega launch on Saturday? Well, definitely the mood is quite charged, just like how we could see the climate over here. And ISRO is prepared for any kind of uh, uh, weather here. And uh, uh, PSLV C57 carrying Aditya L1 is already on uh, the second launch pad. And everybody from now on, they'll be very uh, seriously looking into what should be done. There will be several committees that will be giving permission post which it will be launched on 2nd of September. So what's, uh, uh, you know, Pramod, if you compare uh, the Chandrayaan-3 mission and this one, what was the hardest part of Chandrayaan-3 was the soft landing on the moon. In this particular mission, what's the hardest part that scientists are looking at really as a challenge? Well, this is definitely going to be quite challenging because the prep, uh, the uh, creation of this particular Aditya L1 satellite itself is like very important because this is a space observatory satellite, which means there should be not much dust at all. In fact, it was reduced to like several count. There's something called as nitrogen purging. That technique mm. was used. And even after that, while the satellite is being moved from the construction point to the rocket, that area was also clearly maintained. So all these things have been done. And the second and most important aspect is that after the launch, this satellite satellite Aditya L1 is going to travel 1.5 million kilometers and it's going to go around an yeah. imaginary point called as Lagrange 1 
this is an imaginary point around which there is a kind of balance between the gravitational force of the sun and the earth and this satellite will be placed around this imaginary point where it will go in an ALO orbit. So this is extremely challenging because earlier whatever satellites that were launched they will orbit around a planetary object be it the moon or any planet but this time it's entirely different. Mm -hmm. You know, you're pointing out how we're going to be reaching 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth. That's the L1, the Lagrange point that's been identified as the point where this satellite will go on a halo orbit. It's going to take four months for us to reach there. But Pramod, what's the most important takeaway that ISRO really hopes to get from studying the sun in this manner? Well, the main aspect of Aditya L1 is that after we have conquered scientifically, the moon is to actually research and find data about how the, the sun's surface is acting because there is something called a solar flare and there are various things that we still need to know about the, the, uh, how a star behaves. And the closest one and the most important one is the sun we have. It's almost 4.5 billion years old and there are chances that in the future it could become a red giant. So all these things will be studied by Aditya L1. Very true. You know, you've raised some very important points that I'd like to take forward also. Thanks very much, Pramod, for joining us. Let me introduce now on this broadcast on India Today, Mr. Vyas Rajan, former ISRO scientist. He's essentially a pioneer of uh, the space journey in India. He was also awarded the Padma Shri for all of uh, his contributions to space tech, to space reform in India. Mr. Rajan, good evening. Pleasure to speak with you again here on India Today. Uh, can you explain to us, sir, why ISRO has put the focus on this kind of a sun mission? What do we stand to gain from an Aditya L1? Okay, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. And then in the earlier program also, I was hearing a little bit. I mean, it has explained very well about how much distance, etc. So I won't repeat it. Sure. Most important thing, about sun is not just merely you are studying a star. Please note that if there is no sun, we are not there in the earth. Hmm. It gives, it is the source of energy, it is the living. We live because of it. So that is why in all our ancient traditions, always sun is worshipped. Surya Namaskar, no, very ordinary people will go and will do that. Yes. And bulk of the solar system's mass is with the sun. Now, it's not only, of course, there is a lot of science about the, how the star will come, etc., etc. But mm. most importantly, if you look at some of those payloads, it is studying, they will say, they will just say photosphere, this one, that one, etc., including uh, not only the inner part, but also the outer part. What we see approximately, maybe we should never see a sun directly with the eye. It is very dangerous. Uh, but, but if you look at it with some glass or something, you will find, even otherwise it comes through a cloud or something, you will find a nice bright circle. Yeah. Don't think that is all what sun is. There is so much of it, much, much more in the mm. outer layer, which is called corona we get an opportunity to see it during eclipse. If some of you have seen it, they will say, during the eclipse, it gives a circle. Then out okay. of it, sometimes okay. something and all will be coming. That part of it is the uh, corona, hmm. and some of it are not visible. And the coronal thing is something which is affecting our Earth's atmosphere, yet so many things. Yeah. Uh, and we don't know. And then very interestingly, see some numbers which I say, even for me, it gets uh, mind boggling when I uh, see the numbers again and again. Even I am familiar with it. Mm. Lower atmosphere, that is about 5,730 centigrade. Our hottest piping water is 100 C, 100 okay. centigrade. That is the one which is, is that all? That is why we get a little yellowish and then the sodium spectrum and all we get. But hmm. now, to come to the upper atmosphere of the solar thing, it is three, 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 uh, seven. One crore, one crore degree hmm. centigrade. 
see that. In such a circumstance, uh, uh, Dr. Rajan, and uh, this may seem like a very pedestrian question, but I remember someone came and asked me this today. How is Aditya L1 going to be so close to the sun and yet shield itself from that kind of heat, from that kind of, uh, you know, uh, temperature? Because this is essentially a ball of fire. No, no, good, good question. It is nowhere near the sun. Hmm. It is much nearer than us, but nowhere near the sun. You know what is the sun's, our distance to sun something? 150 million kilometers, that is 15 hmm. crore. Whereas this fellow will be only not even 1% of it, about 1.5 million, as I was told before, 1.15 lakh distance. It is still much, 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 much far away. The only human spacecraft, human made thing, which has mm. gone very, very close to sun is Eugen Parker, Parker Solar Probe. I think okay. it was done with a lot of fair people would have forgotten it. 2018, August 12, 19, 2018, it was launched. Mm. Eugen Parker for me, because I started off my career with cosmic ray research, interplanetary dynamic processes. He wrote everything what it will be from theory. Hmm. And he could see it. One fact, oh God, that old man, sir. Because most people who pro propose theory for such a complicated thing will never see it in their life. It may be he was 94. He saw it and he was hmm. so happy. He was very happy. He is no more now. So that is the only one which has gone. Even that will be the closest approach will be still it is to take place, will be 3.9 million, okay. 39 million. So in this that. particular case, side, Dr. Rajan? Side. It will not be this side, it will be the yeah. other side, it will really enter into the sun. That no, is so numerous. Aditya L1 is actually closer to the Earth than it is to the Sun, but it's still going yeah, to travel yeah, yeah. 1.5 million kilometers, as you pointed out, Dr. Rajan. Final question okay. to you. What do you think is the most challenging part of this mission? In Chandrayaan-3, it was a soft landing. What in this case is the most challenging part, sir? See, it has to go all the way up to that Lagrangian point. That means, see, Sun, uh, solar thing, it was only 4 lakh, 400 mm -hmm. This is 15 lakhs. Okay. That means this all these propulsion systems and all have to be going. And then one thing we always say, even though we know quite a bit more about uh, space, one thing which is told about space, even NASA will say it, is that we don't know yet much thing. What surprises it yeah. is, we don't know. Meteors will come, something will come. So many other things. It is a cold, 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 cold place. Even though the sun may be there, when it hmm. sees the sun, it is okay. But most of the time, it won't be seeing it. So that part of it will be important. And okay. then precisely getting into that Lagrangian point. Okay, so getting the there is point, the hardest is the one part. Where, where, where yeah. uh, as it was told very nicely, between the Earth and the Sun's gravitational Correct. pull will become hmm. equal. And then this fellow will be managing to go. It, it still will be going in an orbit. Nothing in the yes. world can stand, nothing in the world can stand still. Are, Papa, one, one second, let me take rest. Everything has to be going. Earth has to be going, moon has to be going. This fellow also will be going round and round. Then so we'll keep going in a halo orbit around the L1 point. Yeah, Dr. Yeah, Rajan, yeah. you explained this in great, great detail to us. So thank you very much for joining us here on India Today. I think you've given us such clarity on really what the Aditya L1 mission is all about and how it's going to function in the months to come. Again, let me highlight four months it's going to take for ISRO to ensure that Aditya L1 is at that particular point that they wanted at L1, and it's not going to stay still. It's going to be moving in a halo orbit around the L1 point. What's another massive accomplishment, another uh, feather in the hat of ISRO, is again how Aditya L1 is extremely cost effective, much like Chandrayaan 3, much like our previous projects. Aditya L1 essentially costs about $45 million. How does that compare to other similar solar projects? Take, for example, 
the United States. The Parker Solar Probe, which is at a cost of $1.5 billion. It will be closer to the sun, but this whopping cost, compare that, $45 million versus $1.5 billion. Then you have the Solar Orbiter, again at a similar cost of $1.5 billion. This too is by NASA, by the United States. The Advanced Composition Explorer, all of these, mind you, are missions tuned to the sun, focused on researching different parts of the sun. This is at $100 million. Again, let me remind you that the ISRO project is $45 million, a huge difference there. The Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, again, an observatory that's been set up, $500 million. Now, remember that in our case, it's an observatory satellite, and that's at $45 million. Let's talk about the Solar Dynamics Observatory. That's, again, something NASA is working on. It's costing $850 million. All of these projects put together, it's mind-blowing, really, the amount of money that's being sent on just exploring the sun. There's another one, the Interface Region Imaging Spectrograph, which costs a whopping $120 million. United States and Japan, they're working together, collaborating on another observatory. It's the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, which is about $1 billion pegged at that amount. Besides them, there's also the ESA, the European Space Agency, which is working on a solar mission, which is called the Europe Proba 3, $120 million. China hasn't yet sent out their sun uh, probing satellite, but they are planning to. And the budget for that is $126 million. Look at that full list. We are on double digits, $45 million. None of the other observatory satellites or for that matter any of the solar missions are even close to that figure. They're all in triple digits and beyond. And that again puts the focus on how much our satellites, are, how much our scientists are really managing to accomplish here at such a minimal cost. Aditya L1, uh, make no mistake in your mind, is an extremely ambitious mission. NASA, the Japanese Space Agency, the EU Space Agency, ESA, they've all managed to carry out solar missions, and they're the only ones. Between the three of them, they've managed about nine solar missions, and now ISRO will be joining that elite space league. Aditya means the sun, and L1 is the point between Earth and sun that offers an uninterrupted view of the closest star of our galaxy, hence the nomenclature of the latest ISRO project. Sun is the main source of energy of this solar system and holds the biggest secret of this universe. Aditya Elvan of ISRO is the first Indian attempt to study and understand the sun. Aditya will first be placed on Earth-centered orbit before embarking on a 150 million kilometer journey from Earth's sphere of influence to different viewing points around the Sun. It will be placed in a cruising position at L1 between the Earth-Sun system in the halo orbit. The temperature at the surface of the Sun is about 10,000 Fahrenheit or 5,600 degrees Celsius. So there's no way anything comes remotely close to its surface without burning down to unimaginable ash particles. So all sun missions are posted at different viewing points between the sun and the earth. These are called lag range points. These points are used by the spacecraft to station with minimal use of fuel while they continue to study the sun from a safe distance. There are a total of five lag range or L points. Aditya would be placed at L1 that lies between Earth and the Sun. Aditya L1 will carry seven payloads. Four of them will carry out remote sensing of the Sun and three others will do in situ observations. To understand changes in Earth's ecosystems, study ice mass, vegetation, biomass, sea level rise. These observations and studies will help understand the groundwater of Earth and different natural hazards like earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions and landslides. In total, nine solar missions have happened so far by countries like the US and the European Union to different lag range points of the Sun. Aditya L1 comes with the promise to open up a new galaxy of knowledge for India.
We'll continue getting you all the details and, of course, reports, extensive analysis on what the Aditya L1 project is all about. As we come down to Saturday, a reminder that it's at 11.50 a.m. And here on India Today, we'll be getting you all the latest updates. I'll be in Sri Harikota getting you the ground report as well. On the other side of a short break here on 6 p.m. Prime, we're going to be focusing on the India Alliance meet. Mamta Banerjee's touchdown in Mumbai pictures coming in of her meeting with the Bachchans. She's having dinner with them at their residence. Weather forecast now. Delhi, maximum 39 and minimum 29 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 30 and minimum 26 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 35 and minimum 27 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 30 and minimum 23 degrees. Chennai, maximum 33 and minimum 27 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 32 and minimum 23 degrees. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. Let's get your images coming in of Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee meeting with the Bachchans. She's having dinner with them at their residence in Mumbai. These are exclusive images that we're showing to you here on India Today of the entire Bachchan Parivar. You can see uh, Big B, Amitabh Bachchan, Jaya Bachchan, Aishwarya Rai, uh, Abhishek Bachchan and uh, Aishwarya and Abhishek's daughter there, Aradhya, all of them standing by waiting as Mamta Banerjee arrived at their residence. She's going to be having dinner with them tonight and then tomorrow, of course, it's all about politics. But interesting meeting this. Mamta Banerjee is, of course, known to have very close ties with several Bollywood stars stars including superstar Shah Rukh Khan. Saurabh Akhtania is joining us with more details on this. Saurabh, interesting meet and greet this. You've got uh, Mamta Banerjee there to meet with the Bachchan family. Uh, but tell us really, is there going to be a lot of political symbolism? Is there any political messaging involved with this kind of a meeting? <laughs> So, well, uh, a very important meet which has happened at uh, Amitabh Bachchan's resident in Chu. Uh, let me tell you, when Mamta Banjari landed in Mumbai, she straight uh, reached here at this particular place, that's the resident of the Bachchan's in uh, Chu area. When she came over here, she was here at this particular place, at their bungalows, uh, for around one and a half hour. And let me tell you, after leaving uh, uh, Bachchan's uh, family, uh, she spoke to media, she interacted with media, and she clearly said several of the things. Now, first First was that Bharat Ratna should be given to Amitabh Bachchan. If the government does not give Bharat Ratna to Amitabh Bachchan, then she will herself uh, give Bharat Ratna from 
uh, on behalf of the people of India. Now, she also invited several of the celebrities from Salman Khan uh, to Shah Rukh Khan, Anil Kapoor to the Kolkata Film Festival. Now, on the very important topic, that's the India meeting which is going to happen, Mamta Banerjee spoke a lot. She clearly said that there's an important meet, lot of discussion is going to happen, there will be de de uh, there will be a dinner, then there will be a meeting. Now, when we asked her about that, several of the political parties are claiming that their political uh, uh, leader will be the PM face of India group. She clearly said that India is going to be the PM face. So, she did not uh, mention any of the days. She also refused okay. that my name is also not there, but India is going to be the PM face of uh, the India group. Now, she also yeah. spoke so about we'll the So, we'll see really LPG what is uh, the big political takeaways of all of these meetings. Saurabh, my apologies for cutting you short, but run out of time there. Uh, this big Picture is something, of course, that's now going viral on social media. Mamta Banerjee with the entire Bachchan clan, Big B's granddaughters, Aradhya Navya, also present there for this meeting, for this dinner that's happening at Amita Bachchan's residence. That's all we have time for in this edition of 6 p.m. Prime. Thanks very much for tuning in. On the other side, Preeti Chaudhary will get you more details about that meeting and also on the India Alliance huddle that will kick off tomorrow, even as the race for the opposition PM phase heats up.